What is happening, friends? Welcome back to another video. It has been a little bit. I have been busy, and we'll do a life update video talking about what I've been doing um, coming soon. But today's video is super exciting. I have these Recaro Sportsters that I've wanted for so long on any of my builds, really. Um, finally got my hands on a set from my good friends over at Keys Motorsports. I'm gonna have everything you need to do this link down below. This seat setup works on both the E82s and the E92s. So if you're interested in running this and probably some more, but those are what I know. <laughs> so the good thing is these work in both my cars, which is great. They were on back order, but to my surprise, they showed up in less than two weeks, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, so I ended up going with the black leather with the black Alcantara. I think these look freaking amazing. My interior is red on this car. Not really married to the red, if I'm being totally honest. I think it's okay. I wouldn't mind actually converting this entire interior to black. I know that some people are not gonna like that. It's probably an unpopular opinion, but I do prefer the black interior on this car. I might just leave the door cards with a little bit of red just to offset it a little bit. Um, I don't think it looks terrible like that. I do have the rear bolsters or the rear side pieces that are also red. Um, other than that, this car does have a rear seat delete though. So, you know, it's mostly going to be black and we are doing the black headliner and everything. But nonetheless, let's talk about these seats, dude. I am so freaking pumped to put these in the car. So I went with the Recaro Sportsters because being that this is a coupe, I didn't want to have a fixed back and I do want to drive this car as often as possible. However, I do think for my E92 M3, I am going to order some pole positions. I think that would be a good alternative to these seats. And the great thing is if I want to swap them, I can do so. So I also didn't want to go ahead and do like a red from Recaro because I wasn't quite sure how that red would match with the Fox red interior, at least on my E92 M3 and the red interior on this E82. Um, you can do other options, like go ahead and go to AMX, who does custom built Recaro Sportsters in any color you want, and they will match, identically match your interior. Um, it is dramatically more expensive, but you know, that is an option if you do decide to go that route. For me, I was keeping it simple. I knew I just wanted black. Alcantara with leather was gonna be my first choice. The majority of the interior on this car is Alcantara and leather, so I think it all kind of made sense. And again, the great part is I can swap these from this car to the other car and have zero, zero problems. So when I say Alcantara and black, basically what I mean is this is all Alcantara throughout here. And then the rest is going to be black leather all throughout here. It looks really, really nice. Looks very OEM, super, super clean. Minimal badging, just the standard Recaro on the top and the center. And then you also have a latch in the back to lean the seat forward if you want to uh, be able to get into the rear. Probably won't be accessing that too often, but it is there if we need it. All right, so first we'll talk a little bit about why I went with these seats rather than going with like, you know, Sparkos or just keeping these seats that are in here or doing some E9X seats in here. I've always wanted Recaros in one of my builds and finally I have the opportunity to do so. So I sort of sprang on it. Um, the seating position in the E82 drives me insane. It is incredibly high up. I'm six foot two. Don't know if that has anything to do with it, but it is a, um, yeah, you're in the clouds on this car and you're, pr you're pretty much right near the headliner and it's just a very awkward seating position for what I deem to be a now sports car and these will also lean me a little bit lower and put me in a better driving position and they obviously way more comfortable than these stock seats. The side bolstering in these seats is much more aggressive and I just think they're going to look freaking amazing. So it was an obvious decision and now I get to try them for the first time and really compare them to the QRCs that I had, the Sparkos in the E36 M3 and then I also had some very cheapy Sparkos that are just, yeah, I think the R100s, I think they were. Um, those were not very good. But yeah, I've been looking forward to putting them in this car because man, it, it just, uh, I'm over these stock seats. We're also gonna go ahead and weigh them. I don't know if there's a huge weight difference. Maybe there might be. One thing I will note is that we will be coating off the airbag light. We will get an airbag light. Seeing that these no longer have heat, I went with the heatless option. We're in North Carolina, you don't really need it here. And then also um, these don't have airbags. So you're pretty much losing all of that, but that's where the majority of the weight is. So we will first get an airbag light because we are unplugging the factory airbag connections. However, I will have that coated out down the road. I grabbed two sets of the Mach Schnell Universal Adapter Floor Mount 
mounts for these seats. So these will allow us to mount the seats into this car and in my E92 M3. So I also got these from Keys Motorsports. I'll have them linked down below. In addition to that, I ended up getting the Recaro sliders. So I will be able to move this seat up and down, no problem um, for both of the seats. So both of the seats have all of this stuff included. And then lastly, I ended up getting these little VAC seat receptacle adapters, I guess you could say. I think that's what they're called. And these are the low profile receptacle adapters. And basically these are gonna allow us to run our factory seat belt with the Recaros in this car. These will also be linked down below. They were like 40 bucks for a set. All right, so 135 converted to the 1M, a little 1M clone action here. And here is the current interior. So as you can see, I have some of the red in here, but um, I will be obviously losing the red up here. I don't think it's really gonna look too bad with having just the black up front and then having the red on the sides. I don't know, people just have to play it by ear and see how it turns out. Um, then we also have the red in the back. So if I do absolutely hate it, then I guess I just convert the entire car to black. I don't think I will. I don't think it'll be a problem. Um, and then also obviously the seats up close. These just look so freaking good, man. The design of them, everything um, just looks very, very clean and simple which I, they're a classic. Sportsters are just a classic. So it'll be nice in the future to have the pole positions and these, so I can really make those comparisons and decide which one I like the most. I think the one thing that I hear from a lot of people is that when they go to the pole positions, it's just kind of a little bit more of a hassle to get in and drive the car and sort of deters you from wanting to drive the car all the time, which is the last thing that I wanna do. This isn't a track car, it's just a street car. So there's really no point in me going absolutely crazy like that. But We'll see. Um, I might order maybe just one pole position and see how it works in the E92 M3 and sort of make my decision from there. In order to recline these, pretty easy. You have this back here, you just twist it and it slowly reclines the seat back. Then you also have obviously these guys right here. So being that this reclining mechanism is on this side, this will be our driver's seat and then that will be our passenger seat. Um, I'm gonna get the scale out as well and show you guys how much these actually weigh, the stock seats versus the new ones. Hard to say how much, but I'd assume a lot. I've taken these out before. They're pretty freaking heavy, dude. This is, uh, for me personally, man, probably gonna be one of my favorite additions to this car. Um, seats are just a huge, huge game changer. And with the way that these stock seats fit in here and where you seat, uh, I think these are gonna be a major, major improvement. All right, that's enough talking. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below. Let's get into the video. So uh, these are T50s that are holding in the seats. Um, typically, I would disconnect the battery, but it doesn't really matter because we're not plugging anything back in. So this car is going to throw uh, airbag light anyways. So we're just gonna send it. There's a plug underneath the seat to do that. So T50, and you've got four of them, two in the front, two in the back, obviously. So this little tab right here, this black tab, you pull it and it removes the actual plug. We get to pull this behemoth out of here. Just be careful of your paint and everything. <laughs> you don't want to damage anything when you're moving this. Here we go. <sighs> Time we weigh these joints. What do you think the difference is going to be? Leave it down below. All right, so your boy weighs in 198.6. Getting thick. <laughs> the seat is heavy. 263.6. 198.6, 263. .6. Do the math, bro. I'm horrible at math. 65 pounds for the OEM stock seat. 233.6. Wow. 30 pound difference between our OEM seat and our Recaro Sportsters. That's quite a bit. 60 pounds throughout the entire car that we're losing. I'll take it. Okay. All right, so I was kind of looking at all this and you know, that's how it sits from factory like that. These would be our new mounts. Essentially are just like, it's like replacing this piece right here but for our Sportsters, so it'll just bolt up like that or on the inside, we'll see which one. We need to keep this entire assembly and I guess plug too, because we would want the car to know when the seat belt is plugged in. So my thought is let's undo everything from this harness here because you still have these plugs in here. So obviously anything to do with 
the airbags or the heat on this seat, we can just sort of discard or just leave on the seat. There's not like too in depth of a write up on this. So I'm just kind of like learning as we go along guys. So this now will plug back in to the car. All right, so here is the piece that we just pulled out and the plug for the seatbelt. And if we look at the original plug right here, it's sort of keyed for that portion, which is just like this L and we can just plug it right back in. All right, so I'm just kind of looking at everything here. And before we go ahead and jump directly into installing the entire seat and all of that, um, we're gonna go ahead and put in the floor mounts, which are the mock Schnell universal floor mounts. So this is the alignment for these, the way that I have them set up. Um, I also have two sets, so one for that side, one for this side, and they're oriented this way. And then everything lines up right there. So those are the factory mounting holes. So we'll take our factory hardware and obviously put that through and that will lock the mounting plates into place. And then our new seats will go into one of these holes. These are all threaded by the way. So it just makes it super easy to install it. I've seen people put these seats in cars uh, a lot of different ways. You can use like planted, I think makes one. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those down, torque them in, and then we can move on to assembling the slider onto our seat and then the seat will go in the car. Obviously I haven't done this in this car before with these seats, but it is possible that I'll have to loosen these in order to make everything kind of fit perfectly when I have the seat assembled. So I have them tight for now, but if I have to crack them loose, I, I wouldn't be shocked. So let's go ahead and start assembling our seat. All right, seat is up on a bumper stand. Don't want to scratch anything. And now we will be working on the underside. So you have the inside of the slider right here. This is obviously going to hold the handle. So that's going to slide in here and then allow you to adjust it front and back. I've come to the conclusion that this is the proper orientation like this. So we will end up putting in our lower M8 bolt that's included. And then we'll throw in our other side and then put in the bar that allows us to adjust it. We'll slide the whole thing down and then put in the top bolts. That seems to make the most sense to me. However, I'm sure there's like a million ways to do it. Um, and these come with Loctite already on them. Yeah. I remember doing the Sparco ones and they were just, <laughs> they were so confusing to me. I will say that everything about Recaro is just built better. And I'm not saying that because I have Recaro now <laughs> or trying to flex or whatever. Um, I've just noticed that like all of the parts and everything seem much, much nicer. Yeah, so it's sort of like press fits in here. Yeah, so it pops in. Cool. So looking at their website, it looks like the seat belt mount bolts in directly to the Mock Chanel floor mount. And here's the hardware they gave us. However, there's no nuts. We're gonna have to come up with a different solution for that. Shouldn't be a problem. I think I have hardware. This, however, I don't know how I feel about it. If the seat is going directly on top of your floor mount, well, it's not gonna sit flush if you have a giant head of a bolt sticking up. So I think I've figured out how I wanna do this. Um, I took this back off and basically I'm mounting it on the underside here. So it's reverse mounted and that way you don't have to worry about, and this isn't the way that other people do it. They, they mount it on top, but I mean, looking at this, like, wouldn't you just want that below here so you didn't have to put washers up here? I don't know. That just seems like the most obvious way to do it without messing with your seating position, even if it is just a little bit. Okay, so here's where I'm at. Got this one in, pushed all the way that way. And then got this one in, pushed all the way this way. And I remounted the seatbelt a little bit forward on this one right here from the bottom up. So you can't see anything. It's nice and flush. Now it's a little bit forward from where the factory one is, but I don't think that's gonna be an issue. But now nothing is gonna be lifting up weird and it should be flush and good. Then we have our seatbelt plug plugged in. Yeah. I think it's gonna work. So let's put in the actual seat and see how things line up. It's a lot easier to handle, that's for sure. Okay. Oh, dude. <laughs> dude, these are gonna look so good in here. Holy okay, so I just wrapped up the driver's seat. I changed a lot of stuff and I'm gonna go over everything that I adjusted and changed just a little bit to make it fit perfectly on the other side. But hopping in, these are unbelievable. The way that these place you into the car is perfect. Like 
perfect. I can't express it enough. On the previous seats, you'd be up here, super awkward. You are much lower in these. Man, it is good. It's really good. And uh, this is about where I would be, maybe a little bit further back, like right here. And of course, you can adjust back here, how far back you want to be or whatever. These also cup you into the car much, much better. And then also I have my seatbelt receptacle right on the other side, like so. Works just as factory, which is great. Turned out really, really good. I am super happy with this setup. They just look so good. These also came with a Recaro decal, so I threw it on the side. I think it looks kind of cool, but man, yeah, very happy with it. <laughs> I can't wait to drive. All right, so let's tackle the passenger side and I'm gonna show you guys everything about that one and kind of everything that I had to adjust on this side in order to make these work perfectly. I'm gonna show you guys on this side some things that I made adjustments to for the driver's side to make it work with my car, starting with the rails. So put these in just like we did before. And when we are putting on this part right here, one thing I didn't realize until I was in the car, is these little holes in the end right here. Make sure those pop into these right here. So basically just slide in like that, like that. Super important, it's in these little pegs though, because it needs that leverage. Basically what I had to do to make it work in my car, and like I said, this, this could be different depending on which model you have. I had to face these basically outwards, both of them outwards. Now I did see someone's video who had a 1M, this is just a 135, but they had a 1M, and they had to have it positioned both facing one way. He did have the pole positions though, so on the Sportsters, I guess you have to set it up like this. And basically what you wanna do is just measure the bottom of the seat rails on the seat and make sure it's exactly the length that you need. Mine was just above 16 inches, and and then when you're laying your mounts out, make sure that the holes are exactly obviously um, where you want it, which they are. I ended up using the middle on this side and then the outside on this side. And that created enough room from the seatbelt receptacle in order to put the seat on top. And then everything flows nicely. So that's how I did it. Worked out really well. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this one in real quick. Wow. <laughs> Look at how good this looks, man. I have to say, this works really well with the red accents. Dare I say it works better than the red seats. I mean, come on, man. It looks super sharp. Now the only eyesore is this gray headliner and the pillars. But other than that, man, this thing looks so freaking good. Holy crap. Perfect seating position. Love that everything matches. Oh, man, it looks good. love how we have the Alcantara accents here now that match the Alcantara there. A little bit of Alcantara trim. I'm still waiting on my dash bezel in Alcantara. But that Alcantara with the leather theme throughout the car is just too good. These seats also fit my body way, way better. Um, when you're sitting in these, <laughs> you're in them. Just sitting in this feels so, I feel so planted in this car. And the nice thing about this setup with the mounts and everything is you can sort of change your positioning if you need to, but I just set it up as is and it's dead center to the steering wheel, straight forward. I remember in my Sparkos, it was a little bit weird. They sort of had you sitting like 
cockeyed towards the middle of the car. It always felt a little bit off center. And also when you looked into the cockpit with the Sparkos, the seats were kind of like at an angle. So you had to put washers on one side to like even it out. Very strange. I don't know. It could have been just my E36, but who knows? Um, but in this car with these Recaros, man, it just, it's meant to be. It's meant to be. Um, I still would like to try a set of the pole positions. So I think in the M3, we'll get a set of the pole positions and um, we can just swap back and forth if we want to. But for this setup, I really, really like this. I didn't find too many videos online doing like a step-by-step -step on E82 Recaro Sportster install. So obviously the E9X is gonna be very similar, if not identical, but hopefully this helped you guys. You do just have to like loosen things and retighten things and sort of position things around in order to get a fit a1 but once you do that um everything just slides in perfectly and yeah man i'm really really happy with it so huge shout out to the guys over at keys motorsports for sending all this stuff out i'm gonna have everything linked down below i would take the car out for a drive right now but i literally just ceramic coated this car and it's raining so obviously we're gonna have to wait for that but future video we'll go for a drive kind of talk about the seats and the new positioning and everything and i'm looking forward to it anyways guys thank you so much for watching the video i'll see you in the next one